Now, I've had several people ask me what 1080p gaming is like on the new M1 MacBook Pro. And if you've seen my other videos on this topic, such as gaming on the Mac Mini or on the MacBook Air, or even turning my MacBook Air into a full-on gaming rig, you would know that I like to test these things out. So in this video, I'm hooking up my MacBook Pro to an external display, and I'm gonna be playing some games in 1080p and showing you guys the results. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into the video. Okay guys, so here we have the setup. I'm just using my 4K monitor from Dell instead of my 144 Hertz gaming monitor that I used in the last video. And the reason for that is because I just wanted to test this monitor out in terms of gaming. And it's also very handy because I can actually plug my mouse and keyboard into the USB ports on the back of this Dell and it connects to my MacBook Pro using just a single USB-C cable. And that not only connects all the peripherals to this Mac that I need, it also charges it and also obviously allows the MacBook to output display onto the 4K monitor. So as we can see over here, I've got the MacBook Pro open. I'm actually just gonna close that. A few people have said that it's better for thermals to keep it open, uh, but I disagree. I didn't really notice a difference. Uh, if anything, you'll notice a decrease in performance because the machine is also powering the retina screen as well as the external screen. So it's best just to have it shut in clamshell mode. So first things first, let's just give Fortnite a go. Now, if you guys have watched my previous video, you would know that Fortnite generally runs pretty well with very little issues at all. And it's generally pretty easy to get about 60 FPS on this game consistently. All right, so first of all, let me just show you guys the settings that I'm using here so you have more of an idea. So I'm using uh, obviously full screen windowed mode uh, resolution that's just defaulted to 4K. So let me set that back to 1080p. Frame rate, obviously unlimited. And if we come down here to quality, I'm actually just gonna set this to low for now, just to see how it runs. And 3D resolution, we're gonna set that to 100%. And if we come down here, we're gonna switch off motion blur. We're gonna show FPS, and we're also gonna allow multi-threaded rendering. So this should give us the best performance out of this particular game. So we'll apply that, and we'll search for a game, and I will see you guys in five minutes when I've found a game. Okay, so we are now in the battle bus, and right now I'm getting around 80 to 85 FPS, which is pretty good. Again, we're at just low settings at 1080p. So if I jump out, let me try and find an area that's quiet, and when we get down to the ground, I'll give you guys a look at the FPS. Okay, so we're on the ground now, we're getting a very solid 100 and between 110 and 120 FPS. Um, and if we go inside, there is obviously a little bit of artifacting, as you guys would have seen in my previous video. Um, that's probably not the game. It's probably macOS itself, just not being optimized. Getting a stable about 110, 120 FPS out here in the open. Uh, if we chop down some trees, dips a little bit, but uh, yeah, staying very consistent around 90 to 100 FPS. Uh, if we go to do some building, uh, that doesn't really dip below 100 FPS, so... Zero issues there. Okay guys, so as you saw just then, that performed very, very well at low settings. So we were getting a consistent over 100 frames per second. And now as you can see, this is a new game. And the only thing different here is I've actually set the quality preset to high. So all of these quality settings here are at high. And we're gonna see what kind of FPS we are getting. So in the battle bus right now, we're getting around 45 to 50. And if we exit and start parachuting, we're getting a consistent 40 to 45. So I'll see you guys on the ground. Okay, so we've just landed and getting around 50 FPS. This is definitely a little bit more choppy than it was before. Uh, it's actually a little bit difficult to aim at people. Uh, just missed that guy. So let's jump down here and we will smash some stuff up. So getting around 45 FPS, which is... Definitely playable, but because this is sort of a uh, shooter game, you probably don't want to be playing at 45 FPS. You want to try and get a consistent 60. Um, but yeah, not really many issues, to be honest. It is still playing quite well. Uh, let's demolish some of these walls. Okay, so getting around 40 to 50 FPS. Let's take down this tree. Okay, do some building. OK, 
Okay, so yeah, around 40 to 45 FPS we're getting uh, on an external monitor at 1080p with also obviously high graphics settings, which is pretty impressive. All right, so I just got that guy. Let's see if we can find anyone else. It's another one down. And even during um, gameplay and sort of gun fighting and gun battles, um, we're not really dipping below around 45 FPS. So yeah, definitely not too bad. Definitely playable. I would probably recommend playing it low to medium settings though. I think high is probably a little bit too much. All right, so next we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, this is probably going to be one of the most graphically intensive games I'm going to be doing in this video. Now, this game is two years old, but it is still very, very difficult to run in some cases, depending on how powerful your computer is. So let's hit play. And first of all, I'll jump into the settings and show you guys how I have it set up. Okay, so coming into options and then display and graphics, you guys can see that I've got it at 1080p. Uh, I've got full screen on, uh, resolution modifier to just 100%, uh, 60 hertz monitor refresh rate. I can't change that because that's the refresh rate of this monitor. Uh, and then everything else here is just set to low uh, with all the tessellation, bloom, and motion blur turned off as well. So what we'll do first of all is we'll actually run a benchmark and we'll see what the benchmark results are. Okay, so the benchmark has completed. You can see here the average FPS was 42 and we had a minimum FPS of 31 with a max of 79. So that means there's not a huge lot of variance in the FPS, it means it's pretty solid. So in theory, this game should be able to be played fine. So let's come back into the main menu and let's continue and let's see what results we can get. Alrighty, so we're sitting on about 38 FPS at the moment. You can see down there in the corner with the steam overlay. Um, so uh, we are spiking up to about 45 now. So let's do a little bit more jumping around and playing. Okay, getting to around the mid 40s now. And you can obviously see at the view here, this is a pretty resource intensive maps. There's a lot of foliage, uh, a lot of lighting and that kind of stuff, a lot of motion. You can see the birds flying around, um, but we're not really dipping below 40 FPS, which is quite impressive. Okay, when it loads, it dips down a little bit, but um, after it's finished loading, it seems to do fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna call it here and I'm gonna say that this is totally playable at about 40 FPS. Now I've been playing this for probably about an hour before I made this video on 1080p on the MacBook Pro and I really didn't have any issues. It was actually quite an enjoyable experience. So this is definitely possible to play at a pretty decent FPS. So let's move on to the next game. Okay, so as you can see now, we are now playing Dying Light. Now, again, this game is a little bit older. It came out in around 2016, but this is gonna be a good example of what kind of games most people are probably going to be playing on these machines. So guys, you're not gonna be playing the latest Call of Duty at you know 100 frames per second you're probably going to be limited to some of these older games that are a little bit easier to play and are less graphics intensive. So you can see here, I have the settings at the lowest settings and it's also at 1080p. Um, so let's come back here, let's load up a game and we'll see what FPS we get. Okay, so we are easily achieving a solid 60 FPS. Uh, now I can walk around and the frames don't drop, there's no screen tearing. Nothing like that, it plays very, very well. Um, so there's absolutely no issues here. Now I also played this game on the MacBook Air and also the MacBook Mini. 
uh, and it worked very well, probably just as well as the Pro, to be honest. Um, so there's really no issues here at all either. Now, at this point, I've probably been gaming for about an hour and a half to two hours all up in the process of making this video. Now, the fan on the Mac is on, but it's not very audible at all. I'll actually link a video up in the top right hand corner for you guys now so you can get a better idea of how loud the fan is on this thing when it's under load. Spoiler alert, it is quite quiet. So at the moment, it's barely running. Uh, I actually can't even hear it from where I am right now. And I'm only about a meter away from the MacBook. So if we pause this, and let's try to jump onto the desktop. So as you can see here in terms of thermals, the average internal temperature of all the components in the Mac is 75 degrees Celsius, and the CPU is hovering around 85 to 90 degrees, which isn't too hot at all. Um, as I said before in my previous video about the fans on the Mac, they will kick in and they'll turn on and then they'll turn off depending how hot and how cool the CPU is. As you can see now, it's at 3200 RPM. Uh, and I actually cannot hear it at all out of the Mac, especially if I had headphones or if I had game audio coming out of the speakers, I would not notice it at all. It's barely audible. And if we also open up Activity Monitor, I'll show you guys just how much of the system this game is using. So if we look at CPU, um, you can see here 60% of the CPU is idle, so the game really isn't using that much at all. Uh, and in terms of memory, it's obviously maxing out the memory, so it's using basically the full six and a half gigabytes that's available. Um, but you can see here, it's not using much swap memory at all, uh, and it's running the game without any issues at all. So eight gigabytes is definitely enough for gaming on the MacBook Pro. Anyway, guys, apart from that, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As you can see, 1080p gaming on the new M1 MacBook Pro is definitely possible. To be honest, there's really not a huge difference between this machine and the MacBook Air. I think, in my opinion, the MacBook Air performs pretty much just as well. You might see a small performance boost because the CPU can be kept cooler with the fan, but that's really it. If you have any questions or comments or things you want me to try, let me know via a comment down below. But apart from that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.